Hey everyone, Bird Head here and I hope you're all staying safe and well. Welcome to my latest Citizen Channel feature. Uh, please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button and push the bell notifications as well so you know when these vlogs are coming out and uh, of course do lots of stuff city past and city present so uh, please push that uh, notification but make sure you know it's set to public as well don't forget below otherwise you won't get to know but uh, press that subscribe button please check out my links on screen as well for uh, Facebook and Twitter and also don't forget I've got a little film and TV channel on YouTube as well so if you want to have a little break from football check that out and of course uh, on Facebook and Twitch I will check every few days and follow and friend everyone back on there and also don't forget I have a, I have a sort of links with losing business on Twitter they promote uh, city fan related small businesses local businesses which need our help perhaps more than ever these days don't they so please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if I can promote or put some stuff out for you in, in one of my uh, magazine vlogs my city magazine vlogs and don't forget I'll always give a shout out to local local projects or charities etc etc just get in touch anyway please enjoy today's today's citizen channel feature thank you today we've got uh, a history boys feature and it concerns leicester city against manchester city as i'm recording this we've got a, a wembley meeting coming up uh, for the community shield yes uh, leicester against city on the 7th of august 2021 and um, but we have we have met before at Wembley, but only the one so i thought this history boys feature we'd have a look back at that it's quite a quite a well-known game as far as city our city fans are concerned and when i say city i mean manchester city of course uh, uh, whether Leicester City fans will remember it as fondly, probably not. They'll probably remember winning the FA Cup uh, just as I'm recording this at the end of the of the last season, which was fantastic for them and all, all credit to them. So I'm going to look back at that only ever meeting at Wembley before this this one in the Community Shield in 2021, 26th of April 1969. Yes, uh, you're there. This is a, a top the top they wore. I'm sure it wasn't as warm as this. I'm recording this when it's quite warm. So let's get through this because I'll probably faint if I'm not careful. I'll do a Frank Swift and faint if I, if I don't if I don't uh, hurry up. Yeah, I was a regular, of course, at Main Road in the 60s personally but i didn't get to any away games until about 1973-74 when i started to go with a friend to some away matches so obviously trips to wembley for the 69 final obviously for the league cup final 1970 i didn't get to those but of course like many others millions of others uh, who supported city and supported uh, english clubs throughout throughout uh, would have been glued to the tv to watch this game on the 26th of april 1969 because as we know the fa cup was was a big thing it was it was probably for for all i mean for me personally i thought it was better than the league obviously you learn as you get older but uh yeah, it was a big thing, of course it was. Um, it was the last time that the actual cup final was transmitted in black and white. Uh, yeah, in fact, the match was shown on ITV, BBC One and BBC Two. But the BBC Two version that started about 30 minutes before kickoff uh, was actually in colour. So you could actually watch it in glorious colour. But then from 1970 onwards, it was all... all uh, broadcasting in colour all the way through and this of course was the start of a very fierce uh, era of competition I mean away from City and, and Leicester, City and Leicester uh, between the networks of course uh, of course there was, there was even an after match brawl but we'll touch upon that later on let's get let's get the game or our interest in the game over first but uh, there's a brawl between BBC and ITV uh, journalists and uh, cameramen and reporters on the pitch at Wembley while City were doing a lap of honour so we'll, we'll have a little bit about that in a, in a in a, in a little while but let, let's talk about City and Leicester let's not worry too much about that uh, if you're at home watching on the telly of course on ITV you had World of Sport and uh, that started at noon with uh, Richard Dickey Davis yeah he wasn't called Dickey at the time he became known as Dickey a little bit later on but Richard Davis in charge uh, Jimmy Hill was with ITV then we do know he went on to BBC didn't he with Jimmy Hill and Brian Moore in the studio with Jimmy Greaves Jimmy Greaves was putting his uh, his two pennyworth in and of course Bobby Charlton was as well he was even added to the mix but uh, again yeah, no no City no ex City players uh, no change there was there uh, the build up included wrestling of course wonderful fantastic we used to love wrestling in those days from brent town hall featuring they wait for it les kelly everyone's favorite les kelly absolutely fantastic and of course mick mcmanus so there you go what a what a build what a way to build up to an fa cup final speaks going to the pub doesn't it probably not uh, bbc grandstand yeah that started a little bit early got a bit of a jump on itv that started at 11 25 a.m 
uh, David Coleman at the helm, of course. He was assisted by Frank Boff and Alan Weeks, who were uh, who between them. I'm not sure who was where. I'm not too sure whether it was Frank Boff with City or Frank Boff with uh, Leicester. It was obviously they they reported from the hotels of uh, City and Leicester City. I don't think we were on the coaches then. That was a late. I think that was a later development. Uh, of course, at the age, I was only nine at the time. And I would be ten that year, but I was only nine at the time this kicked off. Uh, I would uh, attempt to watch City win the FA. Uh, Cup for a respectable fourth time. That was one of the, the most won uh, clubs uh, in history at that time. City had won it more than quite a lot of clubs, and uh, obviously that was out of seven attempts, so it would have been four out of seven, which wasn't wouldn't have been too bad. Our opponents, though, Leicester had lost in three previous finals. They were trying to win it for the very first time, but they were classed were classed as the underdogs. In the league, of course, there were still games to play. Uh, we'd not really defended our title very well that year. We'd won the title a season before, don't forget. But uh, we had missed Tony, but a certain Tony Buck for over half the season. He was out through injury, but uh, that didn't help, of course. But we would eventually finish in 13th. It was not a total disaster. We're not great, but obviously we had the FA Cup to look forward to, didn't we? But, but Leicester had struggled. Yeah, they, were, they found themselves sort of games in hand, but they were sort of down with the dead men. They were two from bottom uh, towards the end of the season. And certainly by cup final day, with very few games remaining, uh, they still face the threat of relegation, which obviously they could take their minds off it for 90 minutes here at Wembley, but it, it was still there, obviously, as they, as they finished this game. Uh, City had played away at Leicester very early in the season. It was a bit early, perhaps, to tell uh, what was going to happen the fourth game of the season. And Leicester had won this quite comfortably, yeah, 3-0. But uh, Leicester has struggled a bit, a bit inconsistent at the start of the season. And between in October and November, they actually only won, won one game out of about nine or ten games. They only actually won one game. And this led to their manager being sacked in December. And a certain Franco Farrell uh, stepped in to take over the reins and started to do an OK job. Although, obviously, he wasn't helping the league position too much. But at least they were getting a nice cup run. In the same way, the City weren't doing that well in the league. But this, this cup run was a, was a welcome relief, really. I mean, the main road meeting took place just three weeks, just three weeks in a day prior to this uh, FA Cup final on the 4th of April. And uh, not a bad crowd, well, not the, certainly not the biggest of the season, but a 42,000 crowd, which was quite, if you think about the last three games at Main Road after this Cup final, I think the highest we got was 30-odd thousand. So, yeah, not a bad crowd of 42,000 to we witnessed, witnessed this dress rehearsal, of course, for, for the FA Cup final. Uh, and to make up a little bit for the 3-0 defeat early in the season, we actually won this one 2-0 uh, with goals from uh, Mike Summer maybe score, scoring both the goals and of course both both teams played uh, pretty much their strongest lineups. there was no messing about trying to fool the opposition with this and thinking you know, oh we'll play a weakened team and won't play tactics we, we all went in full blooded for these things so there's no messing about like there is there is now but uh, there you go 2-0 win so that wasn't too bad too bad but but after this game yeah it's sort of uh, if you look at the two teams Leicester played four more before the cup final uh, they'd won just one of those, uh, drawn one and lost two. Although, in all fairness to them, three of those games were against uh, Leeds, who were top, uh, Liverpool, who were second, and Arsenal, who were fourth. So, uh, not too bad. And the, the, what, the win they did get was against Sheffield Wednesday. But, but even worse, City's form was even worse. Uh, it was certainly poor. We played five and we lost four of those. Uh, we only won one game, a home game against Sunderland. And we lost the four, we had four aways as well as that home game leading up to the FA Cup final. And we lost at Leeds, Wolves, West Brom and Southampton. So it wasn't great. And our much heralded attack, don't forget, uh, that everyone goes on about, uh, had managed only two goals in those five games. So we didn't go in it uh, particularly on a high, that's for sure. I mean, our City team at Wembley that day was like a who's who, isn't it, of City legends, let's be honest about it. Uh, Dowd, Buck, Pardo, Booth, Doyle, Oaks, Summerby, Bell, Lee, Young and Coleman. I mean, you know, obviously, even Coleman's a bit of a legend to me, so there you go. Leicester, though, they had some of their own heroes. A few names up that weren't that familiar with me. Obviously, they've become familiar over the years as I've done things like this. But uh, they had striker. They had striker Alan Clark, Alan Sniffer Clark. He used to, he went on to great things at Leeds, of course, Leeds United. But uh, he actually scored a hat trick in that three 0 win of Leicester against City at the start of the season. So uh, Alan Sniffer Clark was uh, one of their star guys, expected to do really well, and hope, hoping, as far as Leicester fans were concerned, that he could do well for them. They had Andy Lockhead. Yeah, I mean, I. Really 
remember old Andy Lockhead uh, bought from Burnley. He'd scored 102 goals in 220 games uh, for Burnley and uh, he was sort of expected to do okay for Leicester. He'd been brought in there previously. Uh, and of course, keeper. They had the keeper, soon to become England legend, uh, a young a young Peter Schill and or Freddie Mercury. I'm not too sure, actually. I mean, that image, that image, that image of him, well, I thought it was Freddie Mercury at first, but I think it's Peter Shilton anyway. But uh, yeah, they had a, the soon-to-be England legend keeper, Peter Shilton, in the ranks. Welsh international Peter Rodriguez, I mean, a great, great player. Again, he was one of the standouts, if you like, the ones that we knew at the time. And one of the, of course, the youngest captains ever to ever ever to captain an FA Cup final side at Wembley at the time. That was uh, defender David Nish, who uh, obviously was an England youth international and was uh, very highly rated. He certainly, I think he played a right back in position like our own Tony Buck. On the road to Wembley, Leicester had beaten Barnsley, Millwall, a fantastic win at Liverpool, Mansfield and West Brom in the semi-final. City had beaten Luton Town, Newcastle, Blackburn, Tottenham and of course Everton in the semi-final. Uh, the official attendance sometimes is always a little bit under what the 100,000, but it, was, it still looks in the record books as 100,000 anyway, the official attendance. And of course, we had a Royal Highness Princess Anne uh, presenting the trophies and, pre and the teams being presented to her before the game. Uh, the 24 page, just 24 page official programme, two shilling, two bob. So that was, uh, was that 10p, 10p in today's money. Uh, you sort of uh, ad had ads for the Radio Times, Green All Whitley's, uh, Castella Cigars, Players Number Six cigarettes double diamond works wonders works wonders pale ale and of course set bovril although i always preferred oxo myself but there you go i don't all the brands are available i'm sure yeah joe mercer himself he was confident he was buoyant after the nervy win at villa park against everton of course at the late winning in the, in that semi-final he did say as far as the final was concerned concerned win lose or what the hell we're going to play some football at wembley there will be no tension for us there we've had it all at villa park yeah so perhaps it was a little bit more nervy than joe mercer expected and the pundits have to say as well uh quite sort of one-sided in fairness uh manchester city for me said bobby charlton Football writer Ken Jones said very every argument favours Manchester City. They must be my choice. Goal editor Alan Hughes said it's Manchester City for me. Goal writer Bernard Bale, yeah, good name, said it must be Manchester City to win. Losing managers, of course, in the two City's Cup runs, uh, they, they added their views. Joe Harvey of Newcastle took City. Uh, also, so did, so did Alex Stock of Luton, Bill Nicholson of Spurs, Eddie Quigley of Blackburn, Bill Shankly of Liverpool, John Steele of Barnsley, Tommy Eggleston of Mansfield, all picked City. Don Revy leads his lead team were top in the league and going on, would go on to win it. He said he went for Manchester City as well. Football writer Clifford Webb, though, he, he, I don't know, I have no idea, but I did find him and he was the rare exception. He did predict Leicester, uh, uh, Leicester City could actually do this, but uh, yeah, he, he said it would be a tight thing. As a few did, a few said it, a few didn't commit themselves. He sat on the fence, he got like, the old splinters in the bum, but uh, and some said it was quite too close to call. And whoever scored first would probably have the upper hand, so they were probably right there, weren't they? But uh, yeah, the, the sort of pundits at the time were mainly, as I say, apart from the odd exception, going for a City win. So I'm just going to do a brief uh, summary of the game now, taken from the greatest games, uh, uh, Manchester City by Davy Clayton. Yeah, so I'm just going to read from his excerpt about, about the match, a brief thing on the match. City needed a touch of arrogance, anything to put the spark back into the game, and a typical yet subtle piece of Alisson psychology seemed to do the trick as time came to head out of the dressing rooms to prepare for the game. Alisson told his players to hand back for a minute or two to deliberately keep the Leicester players waiting in the tunnel. Finally, the City players emerged and lined up alongside their opponents before, before walking out to a deafening roar. It was a proud moment for both Mercer and Leicester boss Frank O'Farrell as I led their teams out for the jewel in the crown of English domestic season. For Leicester in particular, reaching the final had been a triumph over adversity and after having shot result of the competition by beating Liverpool at Anfield there was even more impressive considering they had lost 16 games away from home in the league and would be relegated just two weeks after the final the Blues quickly turned on the style attacking from the start but Leicester revelling in their own underdogs grew in confidence and created chances of their own as the match ebbed and flowed the Foxes were playing their third Wembley final of the decade and were determined not to make it an unwanted hat-trick with a third defeat in succession and both Clark and Rodriguez had had opportunities to give the East Midland outfit the lead 
lead. Clark seen his shot brilliantly saved by Harry Dowd and Rodriguez somehow missing the chance from a couple of yards out as he sliced the ball wide from close range. Just three minutes after that miss, they were made to pay a heavy price as City finally broke the deadlock. Some of his wriggled past lunging challenges from Nish and Woolett down the right before pulling the ball back from the byline where it rolled perfectly into the path of the onrushing Neil Young to find an unstoppable shot past Peter Shilton to the roof of the net and give his team a 1-0 lead. Dowd preserved City's slender advantage with several fine saves after the break and was the Blues' outstanding performer on the day. The fact that it was a man of the match proves Leicester were one more than a tad unfortunate on the day, but despite their best efforts, City hung on to claim a memorable win. Mercer's men had their names on the cup all along. Years later, Mike Doyle recorded the feeling amongst the team that had driven to the Blues to glory. He said, I could tell by my attitude the lads were going to win the FA Cup. After we beat Everton in the semi-final, nobody could have stopped us. We didn't consider Leicester our opponents in the final as any great shakes either. No one talked about the possibility of beating Leicester. It was a case of when, not if. I, if I, didn't, get any, I didn't even get any butterflies until we were driving down Wembley Way. When I saw all the fans milling around the Twin Towers, it hit me like a sledgehammer. And that in 90 minutes, all those people would be inside waiting for the game to kick off. Everything changed when we walked down the tunnel with only one thought, to win another trophy for our fans. Doyle's, Doyle also had one painful recollection from that momentous day. He said, during the game, Leicester took a free kick and it hit me in a rather sensitive place. The camera must have zoomed in on my face because I remember swearing in exasperation. The next day, my mum said, Michael, we were never brought you up to use language like that. She was obviously better at lip reading than I'd given her credit for. So there you go, a little, say not so much a match report, but a little bit of summary, nice to hear from Mike Doyle there, wasn't it? Yeah, as mentioned, there was, uh, yeah, Harry Doyle, was, Doyle, uh, Doyle, Harry Harry Dowd was considered the man of the match as far as City were concerned, but uh, I think a lot of neutrals gave it to Alan Clark on the day as well. Although it was scant consolation for Leicester, as mentioned there, uh, they would indeed lose their battle and get, and get relegated from the first division. Uh, as uh, mentioned before, the ITV BBC Battle of Wembley. What about that? Well, as a lap of honour was going on, as the city was going around, Tony Watt was being chaired on the shoulders. Uh, elsewhere, there's a bit of fighting. A bit of we didn't see this on the telly, did we? Uh, this is taken from Sports Journalists Association's article by Philip Barker, previous to the city's FA Cup final with Watford in 2019. He, he wrote the following: We had an exclusive contract to interview the Manchester City players, which was known to all concerned, including ITV. Said BBC Supreme O'Brien. Cowgill. The BBC always wanted to buy the rights to everything, countered Jimmy Hill, who insisted ITV had a non-exclusive contract with both teams. With the help of Manchester City coach Alisson, members of the ITV match day team were disguised in the same light blue track suits worn by City substitutes. They emerged from the seats behind the manager's dugout to start interviewing the winners. BBC match director Alec Weeks now told his crew, move in, stop those B bees uh, use any means possible it was hell of a fight and involved about 40 men there were more punches thrown in than a harry levine promotion obviously that's boxing ken jones the daily Mirror, was on the receiving end of a punch in those days he also contributed to grandstand hill insisted his itv team were manhandled reporter paul doherty told the guardian i was shoved in the back someone tried to pull my mic cord out of its socket while somebody else hacked my shins i was warned about being bullied but i never expected anything like this uh, floor manager david yallop lost a tooth in the scuffles i am considering suing the bbc he said saturday's episode represents nothing more than a rather undignified attempt to break the contract which have been given to the bbc said cowgill once the fighting had stopped both sides were summoned to the football association headquarters for addressing down from secretary dennis fallow so there you go um, i say i was probably young at the time I mean, they may have featured a little bit on the tv i'm not too sure but uh, uh very interesting little aside from the little aside from the game but it didn't, didn't bother us we were just delighted with what had happened on the pitch but uh, i thought it was quite funny i thought i'd just include that with the with this little history boys feature because it is it is history after all of course, uh, yeah, uh, fantastic, fantastic victory for City and uh, delighted fans, me included, so soaked it up at home, of course. And then we did have the chance, of course, and I had the chance personally to line the pavements the next day. I was in Withington Village for as the bus went past, the open top bus with a victory paved. I mean, there was thousands, there was thousands just in Withington Village. I don't know how many more there were elsewhere. There, were, there would have been hundreds of thousands probably watching City come home that day. And then we still had three home games, didn't we? So even better, I could watch my hero in the flesh again and get a proper look at that wonderful silver trophy obviously over the next uh, couple of weeks as well so that's fantastic
So there you go, Leicester City versus Manchester City, the FA Cup final, uh, 26th of April, 1969. Thanks thanks for joining me for this little look back. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, the only previous meeting between our two famous clubs prior to the Community Shield uh, in 2021. Anyway, thanks for watching. How are we going to do this today? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we'll meet here again on the Citizen Channel or perhaps have a look across at my film and TV channel. I only ever ask one thing of you. Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.